This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. Just uh, getting ready to start my day and thought I would look at my glossy leafed anthuriums. It's for some reason they say the glossy leafed ones are easier than the velvet leafed ones, but I don't know. They all seem pretty easy to me. <clears throat> Grow them in biodynamic compost and they thrive. So I'm going to go look at the citrus and the tamarillo, the tree tomato, because uh, we have fruit on both of those, both seed grown. And um, talk about fertilizing and how scary it is that the first thing that we discovered that nitrogen increases plant growth, we exploited it. And we went down this road of nutrient packing. And everything was centered around MPK. Still is. I just wanted to get a look to see what the uh, recommendation by University of Florida was to fertilize citrus per acre. We apply uh, about 26 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year um, through the through manures. And I was shocked to see that the average recommendation is 150 pounds per acre for citrus. Oh my god. There's no helping um, Florida uh, when that's being done. It's totally impossible. And it needs help severely. Uh, why the most biodiverse spot in North America is not a national seashore is beyond me, but it isn't and we continue to pollute and our houses are on septics and we're on calcareous rock and all those nutrients go right into the water. Um, we all know that the nutrients run off from, <laughs> from the, the NPK, most of them. It's just, it's not even funny. It's pretty scary. And we got here because somebody discovered that they could apply nutrients and um, in the form of chemicals and speed plant growth. And so we completely ignored everything else and determined that we knew how to grow better and more food, faster, quicker, more, to prevent starvation. But they didn't take into account that the starvation was going to happen from the nutrients, the lack of nutrients in the food that they're creating. So it wouldn't be apparent visually, but mentally, it's apparent that most people are becoming mentally impaired from their health, their lack of nutrients. And I've taken a lot of soil science classes and um, a lot of uh, uh, molecular biology classes. I kind of don't do that anymore. It's just too much information. I get the gist of it. and. Um, uh, but I, I saw through molecular biology that each pathway that gets discovered gets exploited when it comes to agriculture. So out of thousands and tens of thousands of fungi that are in the soil that they collect, 
they test maybe three or four and they see that one of the three and four that they picked is responsible for preventing a disease or speeding up growth or a better utilization of nitrogen. And so then they detour and provide everyone that fungi without even looking at the whole system. It's just so screwed up. We keep taking these detours and we can't replace nature. It's like, dudes, cool it with the nutrients. I mean, I'll show you my citrus and you tell me if they need 250 pounds of, or 150 pounds of nitrogen. The, the recommendation for uh, grapefruit, which is the crop that they destroyed the most, was 240 pounds of, up to 240 pounds of nitrogen per acre applied. So we've gotten into these detours in agriculture through discovery and develop these uh, toxic systems that grow plants, diseased plants, that are lacking in nutrients. Plants need to get their nutrients from the soil be it with the help of the fungi and other life. And if you don't have that, then you're just not gonna have very good uh, quality produce. So this is uh, Anthurium Recavum. It's one of the shiny leafed ones. I really like it. It's got that pillow top leaf. Um, and I believe this is a new leaf. And then this was the leaf it came from with, and this is the leaf it came with. Um, and then it's got this new leaf coming out here. Um, shiny leafed Anthurium. This is a Anthurium longus melovum, and it's definitely a shiny leafed uh, Anthurium. It's kind of expensive. It's like the Holy Grail of the Anthurium, supposedly. Kind of looks like the Spirit of Sancti, same dog-eared uh, leaves. Uh, it's trying to put out a new growth point. This is the new leaf, that large leaf large shiny leafed. So this is uh, Anthurium nigro laminum. GG. GG. Mm -hmm. This is uh, not a new leaf. It hasn't sent out any new leaves, but it's got a new growth point right there that's uh, going to be a new leaf. I really like this one. This is a new leaf. Uh, both of the new leaves that this plant has put out, first one is heavily scarred. The second one, which is this one, just had a little bit of scarring on it, but it's a shiny leafed, pillow topped Anthurium, which Anthurium pandura laminum. Um, you know, and those leaves get huge on here, but it's, you know, it's a pretty easy plant. Came with this tip burn from the nursery, of course, because when you use chemicals, you get uh, leaf burn, and um, we don't have that problem, obviously. Um, what else is there? I think that's it of my shiny leaf. Oh no, I got VHI. I was just looking at this. I mean, how could you not like that? And that. Really pretty. So we got the, uh, This is a, that uh, philodendron tenue cross. They think it's Sharonia I cross with. Um, that's for sale on Etsy a lot. And I love this plant and it's very cheap. And um, I think it was like $30 and it's, or something like that. It was like not expensive. It's not expensive. I just looked to see if they had more and I saw them. But um, here's a... The King Anthurium, it has shiny leaves. 
That's a new leaf it just put out. I'm curious to see how big that leaf is going to be. You can usually tell by the width of the, you know, the petiole. Yep, just any of these, Angamarcanum and, um, which one is this? This is a neat one, it's got a new uh, leaf, but these are not uh, Selgerants. That's a new leaf on the Pandora laminum, or no, what is that? Angamarcanum, <laughs> but it's not shiny leafed. them I'm obsessed obviously so now I'm gonna go out and look at my uh... got a lot of begonias but I don't really talk about them uh... they're pretty easy once you get them off the chemicals and they survive their attack of powdery mildew. We'll shed all their leaves, the nursery grown trees, and then regrow them here, some of them. Look at this uh, Parisa Verde. Um, it's got excellent variegation. Some of this Jose Blanc. I'm obsessed. All right, let's get on to the fruit. We want the fruit. So people want our fruit, which I love. And I just, it's like, we're a young farm. This is our sixth year. And um, I'm waiting for this uh, Talanzi to open up. Oh, it did. It's a very insignificant flower. Um, turn around. Yeah, people want to buy our fruit, but it's I get so many requests and I have such a huge long list and then I buy up a lot of the fruit because I have to buy fruit for myself from this farm, which is ridiculous. Because, I don't know, it's just totally ridiculous. But that's what my money person says I have to do if I want to um, get a hundred seeds from the mangoes. Um, to plant out. Uh, it's never ending stuff I have to deal with. So, you know, we dry farm everything here. It's like a dry farm situation. So these are like new heliconias I planted over the winter that had never been watered started off with this and this i just leave the you know the full grown heliconia part bits on there when i plant them hopefully they don't get blown over from the wind but then it froze back and these are all the new ones but they don't need any water this is one that i planted and then this is the new uh thing and um i found that nothing needs water it's just you gotta focus on the soil health. And now that I know that they're putting that much nitrogen into the aquifer um, per acre here in Florida, I uh, definitely know I don't want to use any water. Um, Cause along with all that nitrogen is all the heavy metals, the arsenic and the, um, the cadmium and the other stuff that you don't really want and the lead and um there's a lot of it in fertilizers and people fail to realize that um, because they only look at their plant growth and people think that doing part permaculture and part um like slow release fertilizers like osmocote or something is is uh, gonna help them but 
no one cancels the other out so um you're not going to get a, a permaculture or a biodynamic result from a application of chemicals especially since you don't have to do it that's the whole problem i have is people don't have to do it oh just like why people just fail to understand that their choices have consequences down the line downstream effects look at all this fruit on this tamarillo i mean i've been growing this tree for from seed for um two this is a two-year-old plant and um uh it started like getting anthracnose over the winter um so i dumped some manure around it and it seemed to snap out of it uh people have issues with um uh, what are those bugs nematodes those those <laughs> they're not really i guess they are um, but nematodes um, but if you apply raw manure, clean raw manure, I'm not talking about some sludge from black cow or something like that. I'm talking about clean manure that you know where it came from and you've asked them if they use bug sprays and stuff like that and antibiotics uh, or, and whether or not they feed their uh, animals uh, GMO grains. So you have to ask all that stuff in order for it to be clean. But no water, dry farmed tamarillo outside in Florida in the weeds. We have successes because we look at our system like it's an old growth forest or a sand dune at the beach. An old growth redwood forest that they had to build elevated walkways so that people wouldn't damage the system. So that's how we look at our whole system. We, we stay off of it. We uh, respect and remove ourselves from the soil and just apply pretty much raw manure in small increments that works out to 26 pounds of nitrogen per acre per year. Well within the biodynamic threshold of how much they say you can apply. That's what is so screwed up about the whole thing. All of them have different recommendations. We took this detour on MPK and it's still pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed when it should be, what are you applying? Where'd you get it? How did they make it? What's in it? They don't look at any of that stuff. Just buy it and apply it. 250 pounds per acre. <clears throat> People apply it without wearing masks. I mean, <sighs> mm -mm 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 -mm. the dust from the fertilizers can have health effects on s some people. Just depends on how toxic your system is. We've made our soil system so toxic that I don't know. I don't know if you can come back from uh, 250 pounds of nitrogen being applied per acre for 70 years. No wonder all the manatees are dying. I mean, I don't know. I just, uh, look at the citrus, Eric. Look at the citrus. So we grow a bunch of little citrus, all from seed. All of our citrus is grown from seed. I buy like navel oranges, organic navel oranges and, and, um, eat them until I find one seed out of, you know, a hundred fruit. And that's what that is. Um, plant it, plant it right in the weeds, 
dry farmed, no water, 26 pounds of nitrogen per year. I mean, it's so pretty here. I just, I just can't believe people don't even think about anything, but um, I'm for Trey. And what you're doing is uh, a, a sidebar of off nature that is destroying nature. <clears throat> just, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I don't know. Got to keep doing these videos. That's what I have to do. So this is a little uh, seedless uh, mandarin orange, one of the tiny ones uh, that I found a seed in, and it growed up. I think I found like three seeds, but that's the only one I got out of it uh, that grew. So. Here's another one. This one's big. So this one's in with all that stuff that I uh, did cuttings of. Um, this is the cutting of uh, the blood orange. And um, the juicy pearl is in here somewhere. I know I just saw it, but I saw the, here's the, um, the uh, MB. Looks very healthy. That's been very slow growing, but I find it interesting that the citrus is biggest in with the stuff that I planted, all the other stuff in, in the same hole with it. So I do have paths through here. It doesn't look like it, but I take the same path. I don't like clamber all over the dirt. There's a Citron. Seed grown. Some other stuff in there, but I can't look for it. This is one of those plums. I like to eat greens off of it. I just never seem to do very good. But here's a blood orange tree. From seed. They're all seed grown. One of our little achachas. Seed grown. Okay, a lot of y'all want uh, the uh, biraba, the rolinia fruit. And. Okay. I planted like 115 Rolinia trees here that I bought from the nurseries. They were cheap. I mean, it wasn't like I paid $60 a piece for them. I paid like $10 a piece for them. So it wasn't like a huge investment. Price of one expensive house plant. And, um, these are the only two that survived. So they were growing. They weren't growing fast. I planted them out. And um, after two years, we felt we needed water. So we drilled a well and I connected them on drip to water. Or no, I flood irrigated, but not like standing water flood. I uh, just would like turn it on and then turn it off after everything got, got water in the system but I was mowing the lawn still. And these are the only two I didn't water. And they're the only two that survived because they couldn't deal with the pH of the um, uh, change from the well because uh, there was no biology in the soil to buffer the change in the pH. There were nursery started trees 
and they quickly got black spots on them and um, died. Hundred, hundred and some odd trees, except for these two. And these two, you know, they're not, they haven't produced fruit, but they're getting close. Uh, this is the first year that they ever kept all their leaves during a drought phase. Um, and they have big flowers on them, so I'm not ever going to water them because we only have two trees and we don't water, so I had some mulberries on this. World's best, but I ate them all. A couple more left. I have to keep my eye on those two little mulberries. Um, I'm going to work my way down to the... Uh, down to the citrus, but I want to look at this. Um, mulberry. Pick some leaves for my tea. So I make fruit leaf teas. Um, I, I, they make me feel better. I, I, I can tell. I can tell if there's a difference uh, when I do and do drink them and don't drink them. So, I try to drink them every day, at least twice a day. Happen to be out. Mostly I make a citrus leaf and, um, look at these look good. There's a lot of them too. Um, I've been eating mangoes. I thought this tree didn't have any fruit on it, but it was all down here in the, the weeds. It's a good spot to hide from the critters. Um, fear of fruit. Can't hide from me though. 150 pounds of nitrogen for the citrus going in. And then you mow you uh, mow with machinery. So all I would bet like 70% of that runs off. Certainly explains our <clears throat> algae algae problem here. Our our uh, our human caused putrefaction of um, the most biodis biodiverse spot in North America. We're too busy looking at what books you should read and. Whether somebody that looks like you is getting ahead. We don't even bother looking at. We don't even bother looking at the uh, problem that we've created. Veering off how nature intended plants to grow. Because we discovered something and felt we were. That's how you do it. And that's how you do it. And that's how we've been doing it. And it's, it's unnecessary. This is a little citrus um, that uh, doesn't have any fruit on it, which is kind of weird. Um, it's a little uh, orange sherbet mango. Got a little fruit there. I haven't checked this orange sherbet fruit. Looks like there was more fruit on it. Well, these look good. The little tree, it's two years in the ground and it's got quite a bit of fruit on it. For its size, I think that's a good amount of fruit. Um, I see some fell off, which is good. Probably the creatures are getting them. I see some that are eaten. Um, but, you know, it's seven feet tall and never been watered. And it was planted from a three gallon, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, eleven fruits on it. That's good. I'm happy with that. I mean, uh, gonna get some guanabana leaves. This is our. My screen is dirty. My 
Let's see, we're trying to do a close-up now. Come on. There we go. Um, our Guanabana tree. It uh, didn't die from the freeze, but some of the branches uh, definitely didn't come back. Um, not all of them, but it looks okay. It, this thing has not produced fruit, but it's getting so big that eventually it's going to just start producing fruit. So I'm not worried about it. I'll go back over to the citrus. This is a uh, Inga spectabilis. Um, it sure was like showing some drought stress after the cold winter, um, but none of its branches died from our freeze or anything. And it's getting pretty big. So I imagine the freeze is not gonna be a problem in the near future. Okay, I got a Guanabana leaf. I got a mango leaf that I dropped. Um, Got a citrus leaf. A couple of them. I try not to look at stuff that's, uh, you know, about, you know, how much pollution they tell you to apply, the colleges tell you to apply. Um, no wonder everyone thinks I'm crazy uh, and that you have to apply mass amounts of nutrients in order to get fruit. Um, that's what's taught. That's the, the path we chose to support people that are in the wrong, to make them rich. Because they could afford to write the books, tell you how to do it, buy your pro their products. <sighs> so this citrus, look at how gorgeous this citrus is. You're not going to tell me that I need to apply 150 pounds of nitrogen to get fruit on this tree when I have never even given this thing a pile of manure. Um, it's loaded with fruit. Um, and this is a three-year-old tree from seed, dry farmed. Uh, yeah, it's got some issues, but what I've discovered is that the, look at how nice and clean the fruit is too. That's the really amazing part. The, the citrus needs shade. On a young tree, I was wondering what the burn part was on the top of the citrus on the younger tree's fruit. Um, last year, I thought it was from somebody burning something, but I realized that that was drought stress. Um, cause it happened right around this time. And I see it on some, a two year old tree that has fruit on it. So I know that that's what that is now. Um, I mean, I don't, can't prove it, but that's just, that's what I see. That's what I see happening. And since nobody else grows like this, that's pretty much what I think is going on, in case you want to know. So there's a lot of fruit on here. Um, uh, seed grown off our fruit trees from our fruit tree. Um, two years, three years three years with all this fruit. So when this fruit's ripe, the tree will probably be close to four or four years. Um, this yellowing and stuff, that's from the drought stress. I firmly believe that. And the leaf miner is probably from the drought stress because it's like, it's already like shut those leaves down. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing, I think. But 
I don't know, I get amazed about stuff that most people don't, I guess. A lot you y'all do, but Okay, I should have been picking these mangoes because it looks like creatures have been getting them. Um, but I don't see any fruit on the ground, so maybe not. Caesar weed leaves. A lot of these weeds that grow in here make great medicinal teas too. Um, so I always try to grab a couple of weeds when I'm out on my walk. Um, in the morning. Wonder how much nitrogen they tell you to apply for bananas. That's what really blows my mind. The plants will build the healthy soil. With small increments of manure applied or compost. I mean, a bag of compost is probably a lot cheaper than your bag of fertilizer you buy. I, I just don't understand how people choose to they just don't hear, I guess. They don't hear that that's, we've got a, a pollution runoff problem, nitrogen and heavy metals. <clears throat> I see a mango over there. Who is that? Oh, I see a couple mangoes. We got some mangoes. They're trickling in. Uh, very few people are gonna get mangoes from us this year. Uh, very, very few. I'm sorry, but we just didn't have a lot. Hopefully next year will be a completely different story. Because our mangoes are quite uh, stellar. Um, okay, I would think that this Atamoya tree would have fruit on it, but it doesn't. It looks very healthy, though. This is Malika. It's a Kizar mango. A little tiny tree. Um, Kizar is a good fruit. I like it. And then we got some Oregon's back over there. We got some mangoes. Mangoes. Can I have a leaf, please? I'm so looking forward to jackfruit season. I love jackfruit. It's like one of my favorite fruits. I've been eating up some mang uh, yeah, mangoes. They uh, put some tea, uh, pigeon pea in there. Tea. Um, uh, back to, I can eat them again, which is, which is nice. Local Floridian girl that was here at the farm says, Oh, I get like that every year. And then mango season rolls around. And uh, Garcinia humbromiana. I think I dropped my pigeon pea leaf. And the biddens, you know, it's good for colon health. Um, I do the, the uh, uh, leaf teas from the ginger leaves. Or, you know, I always put ginger in there. Lots of ginger. And some wild grape. Okay, we're 
for some more pigeon pee. And oak leaves. Uh, a chacha leaf. still see some green uh, gardeneriana fruit on there so that's good anyway this is florida natural farming at frog valley tropical fruit farm i hope you have a good day <laughs>